Good morning. Today I'll be giving a summary on chapter 7 about the passion free and desire free attributes of God. To start off, I would just describe God as very passionate. Sorry, he is neither passionate nor does not have any types of uh, re renunciative attributes. And what does this mean? Not having passion. Well, what does passion mean? It means that means that you want something, feeling a desire of something that is better, of better quality, or it is unpossessed. But the question is, is there anything that God does not have? Is there anything that God does not possess? No. It's God created it. And also, is there anything better than God? No. It shows that God has everything. God has all this uh, bliss, as is the most happiest person, as everything. Now, by not having anything better than God, there's nothing remote from God. Everything with this is within God's reach. But for us, it differs from us because we have desires. We have these different types of passions, some things that we do not have. You know, like let's say for example we want a million dollars let's say for example that's something that we want that's like a passion God on the other hand does not have that kind of passion because he already has everything everything he owns he created this entire universe and that shows that nothing is better than God now moving on to the next topic study of the Vedas who revealed the Vedas and why it's obviously God. He revealed the Vedas. It shows in Vishnu Purana. He revealed the four Vedas after the earth was created to four sages, to four Rishi Muni. He revealed the Rug Ved to Agni. He revealed the Yajur Ved to Vayu. He revealed the Sam to Aditya. And he, re and he revealed the Atar to Angira. Now these four sages, why do you choose them? Because those were the four purest sages, purest of all men, aside from the first man and woman created, Banu and Shatru. This happened a long time ago, so that's just a bit of history. Now, the method of how he informed us, of how he informed of us all this knowledge, all this knowledge of the Vedas. You know, since Bhagavan, since God is formless, how did he do it? How did he how did he give us this knowledge if he does not have any type of form, if he does not have any specific form? How did he give us this knowledge without a mouth? How did he give us this knowledge without any vocal cords? How did he give us this knowledge? It's not so much a matter of him giving us this knowledge from outside. No, no, no. He didn't need to just appear there and he didn't just talk with a mouth. No. He appeared it within. He gave us this knowledge within. You could think of this as like enlightenment through meditation. And through this, we took this knowledge and we passed it on using our mouth. So that's how we talk, just like uh, Acharya Ji, he just gave us some knowledge right there. He used his mouth. Whereas Bhagavan, he didn't, he didn't, Bhagavan or God doesn't need a mouth to inform us because it comes from within, from within our soul. You know, God is always within us. God is within, is within everyone, not just one. So, the matter of speaking, why, why is the Vedas, why are the Vedas in Sanskrit? not in any other language. But well, Sanskrit, it's not belonging to any specific type of country. You know, it's, it's actually completely international. It's not for any specific type of country. So then every country has an equal opportunity to learn the knowledge in the Vedas, not just one country in particular. You know, if he did it for one country in particular, then every other country around this, on this planet would have difficulty trying to gain the knowledge. That would be completely unfair. That will be going against what, what God would have to do. He is to inform us, give us knowledge, teach us what's right and wrong. And if he makes it difficult for, difficult for everyone else, that's not fair. And um, I believe that's the total basic summary of chapter 7. Thank you for your time. And uh, next week we'll be covering uh, the subject of the Vedas. Thank you.